there's nowhere else for these closers to go. Yeah. There's nowhere else for you to go. And that's, I think, why you saw him struggling late. Mm-hmm. Because the crowd gets into it, and then you realize, oh, I got Volpe, but I got to worry about who's next and who's next and who's <laughs> next. And every hitter you think of who's next is an all-star. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm one of your hosts, Stacey Gotsoulias. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Brian McKeon. Brian, how are we doing tonight? Eh, bummed out after a loss, but it was a good series overall. What an exciting finish, too, right? Yeah. they See, they made it exciting. It would have been great if Judge could, you know, do something. But uh. all right, before it. we get into the recap of everything, don't forget to subscribe. To the podcast on whichever podcasting platform you prefer. You can su- subscribe to our channel on YouTube, like the video, hit the bell so you're notified whenever our videos go live, whether they're live or not, and we might go live at some point. There's a tease for you. Coming up on today's show, Strowman's performance against the Marlins. Plus, we'll go around the league because some big stuff was happening on Wednesday, and we will debate our all Yankees team of the 2000s. But first, uh, something happened that we were talking about, Brian. Isn't this crazy? Because we came onto the show and, it, and it, we manifested it, I feel like, because Anthony Volpe, I, I texted you as soon as we got the notification what, around around three o'clock. Yeah. Anthony Volpe in the leadoff hole. Now I'll say this. We wanted Volpe in the leadoff hole because of what Volpe uh, means and, and what kind of hitter he's become. I think this was more due to Glaber's struggles than it was because of Volpe. But I think I, I think it had a little bit to do with both, right? The fact that Volpe was playing well, but Glaber's struggles kind of helped Boone ease him in more. I liked the lineup a lot more today. I did. And a lot of Yankee fans on social seem to be upset with it because they didn't want a uh, shakeup of the lineup. They liked the consistency. I want the consistency to start from today on because but, I, I like this lineup a lot more. But was it wasn't that much of a shakeup. They basically switched two people. It wasn't like he reshuffled everything. Maybe he, in the well, maybe the Yankee fans were not ready. I, I know one of the bigger ones, uh, Josie McFly is usually the one. That yes. I was just going to, I was going to bring and, him up. <laughs> and, and, and Josie was not happy with that. And, and, and I didn't understand why. And I wanted to go back at him and say, this is Volpe's true role on the team. This is where Volpe should be playing on the team. So I thought it was the perfect spot for Volpe to be in. I think this is the spot that Volpe should be in for the rest of the season going forward. And I think Glaber slides into that lower part of the lineup better. You yeah. know, Glaber can, Glaber's got pop in his bat. He has a 38 home run season. He had a 90 RBI season. Like Volpe's got enough pop where you don't necessarily need him in the leadoff hole. So, and, and Volpe puts, you saw it already on the base paths, right? I mean, that Soto double late in the game. Yeah. Volpe scored from first. And yeah. that was huge. Got the crowd into it. So uh, Volpe does a lot more in the base pets that Glaber wouldn't necessarily scored on that play. Right. So uh, I think there's a lot that, that, that speed element makes Volpe the better uh, lead pick off for me at leadoff. Yeah. That's why I want him at leadoff. Nothing against Glaber because he's fine at leadoff, but I really do like him in. See, it's kind of hard now because Stanton's actually hitting. Because yeah. at first it was, why are you putting him in the le- into uh, the cleanup spot? And this series, he's been incredible. And now it's kind of like you're thinking, oh, well, who are they going to stick at five? Okay, and, Rizzo, and, really, and then who goes six? <laughs> you know, so that part of the lineup too, is questionable. What, what needs to be noted, too, is the fact that with Stanton, with Stanton struggles, his struggles lasted for the road trip, and that was really it. Once he got home, I mean, even, even today, I mean, he had the home run today, but the at-bats later on in the game today were terrific. He wasn't chasing balls that low in the zone. He wasn't chasing balls outside of the zone. I mean, he was he was outrageous. You even saw when they brought in their closer. He was clearly pitching around Stanton. And oh, yeah. like, clear, clearly was pitching around Stan, had no intention of throwing Stan anything close to the strike zone. Uh, yeah. When Stanton's getting pitches like that and they're pitching around him, you've seen it a lot in the last couple of years when Stanton's struggling. Guys come into a game and they look for the opportunity to strike out Stan. They think of it as an easy out. When they're pitching around him, that makes it so much better for your team and then the, the rest of this lineup. I mean, I think we got a note too. With, that game ended pretty exciting. 
It did. They led. They they uh, loaded the bases at the end. Judge got up with the bases loaded and popped out. Who's Judge has been struggling a lot to start this year, it's, and it's gone kind of hidden because of this lineup. But let's be real with how fearful this lineup is. I mean, yeah. in, the, in that ninth inning, Volpe gets that walk. Soto comes in. Soto walked twice because there were five balls in that. I bet. And that I bet. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how that 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 third that second strike was called not called the ball. That was crazy <laughs> to me. But Soto walks twice, and you get up. The bases are loaded, and you know maybe mid season when Judge is feeling a little more. That that's a ball that's you know he's either going to hit out or he's going to drive a little further and and get under a little more. But overall, I mean that's what this lineup does, right? Yeah. Like you, he could not afford to give. To, he could not afford to pitch around to not pitch around Volpe because he had to try and get Volpe out, right? Yeah. Because and he had to try and get Soto out. Like he has to get these guys pitches to hit because. The next, the next batter after Judge is one of the hottest hitters in the league in Stanton, and then after that you have Rizzo, who's 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 really tough against lefties. So uh, when this lineup is looks like this and it's so deep and it's so far down, there's nowhere else for these closers to go. Yeah. There's nowhere else for you to go, and that's I think uh, why you saw him struggling late mm -hmm. because the crowd gets into it, and then you realize oh, I got Volpe, but I gotta worry about who's next and who's next and who's next, <laughs> and every hitter you think of who's next is an all star. Right. So you, you're it, once this team molds into form a little more, that's a game that I feel like they come back and win. Yeah. And even with Judge struggling as much as he's struggled so far to open the season, he's getting walks and stuff. But, you know, the strikeouts are a little high. And as you said, there are some balls that he's hitting that he's just not getting yet. And he yeah. will. It'll come. But this team is 10 and three with Judge yeah. not being Judge. So well, that just shows that's you how point. different the <laughs> the team is right now and uh, that's like, the key point they're, yeah. they're 10 and they're 10 and 3 without judge performing i mean he's got two homers and six rbis but he's hitting under 200 mm -hmm. i mean he, he's not performing and and they're and they're still 10 and 3 and he's going to he's going to figure it out at some point you know that's what's going to happen now weirdly enough though judge is not notorious for slow starts um teaser to our our third segment we're going to debate the top yankee team of the 2000s and my first baseman is mark Teixeira, a guy who was notorious for slow starts i mean yeah. he didn't get going till may or june usually yep. <laughs> notorious it starts judges the exact opposite i mean he's had a few aprils where he gets 10 12 home runs and just and never slows down so that would be a little concerning to me but again that's what helps with his deep lineup right and with stanton performing and with soto he's got time to figure it out he's got time to slow down and to had the same thing right to yep. you had a rod you had jeter you had other guys in Atlanta that kind of protected you a little bit yeah. so I don't know if I'm as concerned about the judge thing as maybe some people are. It is two weeks. He is struggling a little bit, but you got to give him a little bit of time. Oh yeah. And exactly what you said, this lineup is so similar to what the lineups used to be like with the mixtures of the lefties and righties. It's not yeah. just righties and judge doesn't have that pressure of carrying the team on his back anymore. Well, that's what's huge. There, there's no, he doesn't have to go out there and hit the nine run home run every game. Right. At, at, you know, he doesn't have to do that anymore. He just has to be himself. So uh, when this lineup starts rolling though, because I don't feel like to me at least, and I could be crazy and I could just be, you know, falling in love immediately. But <laughs> Juan Soto to me, I, I don't envision him going on bad stretches. He just, he's, he's too much of a complete player where even when he's struggling with the bat, he's still going to walk three times in a game. Yeah, that's what the str the struggling will be that he's not hitting. Yeah, he'll, but go, he's 0 walking. he'll go 0 for three with two walks. But yeah. like, that's the thing. Like he doesn't have a extended period of, of he doesn't strike out. I don't have to right. notice that. He doesn't strike out like ever. Uh he's he's a just been a tremendous breath of fresh air in this in the middle of the slam. And it's clearly, I mean, you, you mentioned this two days ago, but it is rubbing off on the rest of this team. You mm -hmm. can just tell it. Verdugo's at bats, and Gla even Glaber. Glaber's had good at bats. He's not making good contact, but he's had good at bats. Volpe's at bats. These guys are taking a ton of pitches. They're, they're, I mean, they are doing what Soto does: take a lot of pitches, drive the ball down the field, and hit good pitches. You notice that with Soto, even when he takes strikes, he doesn't take strikes in in bad areas. He doesn't swing at balls in bad areas. He doesn't put the ball in a bad spot. When he swings, it's in a spot that he wants. Mm -hmm. It's 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 so impressive to watch him on a daily. I heard an interview the other day with Buster Only. He's Ted Williams. He is pretty much that that that's what he is. He's Ted Williams, and yeah. and and if he plays like this for the next decade, he's gonna have the same numbers as Ted Williams. That's the scary part. Hopefully, it's in Yankee pinstripes. I just like when he <laughs> when a ball is a strike and he'll nod and be like, "Yeah, that was a strike." Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I that anyway, I couldn't have done that. But he's like he he like acknowledges that because his his awareness of the strike zone. Is is so unbelievably impressive. 
Yeah. He just, he knows, and it's it's incredible where he acknowledges it's a strike. He acknowledges when it's a ball. Again, the, the, the first walk that he had when they called it for strike two in the ninth inning, it was a ball. He knew it was a ball. It was high and it was outside. And he started to walk and then he turned back and he was like, oh, I see where the ump's going here. Like he 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 doesn't get frustrated. He knows the ump called that, called that a, a, stri- a strike. Okay. Now he adjusted. And he adjusted. The next pitch was a ball in the dirt and he, and he took for a walk. And you, you notice it more in the eighth the double that he ropes on the line, which is an absolute, I mean, that ball must have traveled like 109 miles an hour. He laced it. Watch that at bat again. It's one of the more impressive baseball at bats you've ever seen. The pitches that he's taking, the shuffling, and then the ball he connects on is right there. The swing is, he's not selling out on his swing. His hips aren't open. His legs, it's a perfect swing every time he makes contact. He could hit 20 home runs this year and still be the most productive player in baseball. That that, that and In a, an era where home runs are all that anyone cares about. <laughs> it is so impressive to watch him every day. It it, it, it really is, Stace. Um, we got to get into a lot of things that happen around the league. The Yankees have off tomorrow, so we don't really need to discuss uh, what's going on in Yankee land. But we have to get into the rest of the league because former Yankee greats' son debuted. <laughs> I mean, I mean it when I say great. He, okay. We'll talk about that in the next segment. Okay, for everyone watching and listening, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button on our videos, hit the notification bell so you know when our videos go live. Also, reply to the pinned comment on our videos. Today is your last day to get your Fan Mail Friday questions in. And if you want your questions answered for Fan Mail Friday, you can join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club to have top priority. The link is in the description. You'll get texts from us and question. you can text us questions also. And they don't have to be Fan Mail Friday questions. You could just ask random questions during games and try to answer them. There's a 14-day free trial. So again, yeah, coming up next, we're talking about stuff happening in the league. <laughs> Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Protect your family from financial strain by using Policy Genius based on their thousands of five star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. And Locked On Yankees is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit is only available to u.s customers Welcome back. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And don't forget, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. X SXM is very hard to say. Back to back, yeah. It can be difficult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so going around the league, something very exciting happened. Maybe not for the Yankees. 
definitely not for the Yankees. <laughs> no, because if, if if he is as good as advertised, he is going to be a thorn in the Yankees side for the next 15 a years. Long time. For, At he's least only 20 years. years old. Okay. 20 years. <laughs> Of course, we're talking about Jackson Holiday, son of former Yankee great Matt Holiday. <laughs> former Yankee great is right. Now, I'm being facetious. It's more former uh, Rockies and former Cardinal great. But Matt Holiday did have a solid tenure with the Yankees. I did like what he did. And his kid, uh, this kid, Jackson Holiday, has got something about him. He's a shortstop. He doesn't have a lot of power, but a tremendous amount of speed and drives in a Fun of runs. I don't know if yeah. you saw his minor league stats from last year. He had like 19 home runs, but he had like 96 RBIs in the minors <laughs> last year. He's a tremendous player, gets on base really quick, and has one of the best gloves, they've said, in a generation. So, yeah, really weird. Uh, shortstops for the Orioles. Uh, you don't really uh, associate great shortstops with the Orioles. I'm being facetious, of course. Yeah, again. not at all. Uh, <laughs> no, definitely not because at all. <laughs> you just, uh, with this kind of player coming up, this he could torment the Yankees for the next next two decades. And it seems like a lot of players in the Orioles kind of doing that. I mean, they have one of these teams. They are just building, like, they, they did it right. If you're going to look at how a team goes from the, the bottom of the league to just building and building and building, they did it right. They've hit on all their draft picks. They've they've they scouted these players really well. Their analytics clearly work. And boy, they are they, this team is going to be. There is no more Yankee Stadium South anymore when they when they go to Baltimore. It is not going to be an easy trip to go pick up three wins at it in four games anymore. That is not what the Orioles are becoming. It's going to they're they're a thorn in your schedule every single year now. They really are. Yeah. It, it, they have become that team, especially once they improve their pitching, which they already have. That this I mean Jackson Holiday was hitting ninth today, right. And he's only going to get better. I, he, they, they are just, they have become this insane team. He got his first RBI today too. Actually, didn't get a hit in his debut, but uh, he got his first career RBI, and he debuted at Fenway Park, which I feel like is a major league baseball player is pretty like surreal, right? To debut at like one of the oldest stadiums, that's pretty surreal to debut there. Yeah. So I mean, he, this kid scares me. I love seeing young talent come up, and I love seeing uh, these guys debut. And I don't know about you too. It feels like the younger talent in the league, they're ready quicker. Yeah. Than yeah, they ever have see, been. Yeah. You're seeing a lot more guys come up at 1920 where yeah. there were some exceptions to that rule, but for the and most usually it was part, 24, 25. Yeah. And, and you it, got the occasional, like, like, yeah. And you got the occasional 21, 22, if they were really exceptional, like Jeter, because yeah. you know, I'm the same age as Jeter. So when he came up, it was cool to have someone exactly yeah. my age playing base. I was like, wow, this is, Really amazing. And you mentioned the uh, <laughs> Orioles shortstop and how, no, they've never really had a big name shortstop. The night that Cal Ripken broke the record, I was in college. I was at a pizza joint and I was watching the TV because he was mm -hmm. doing the lap around Camden Yards. And this guy looks at me and asks, do you know what's happening? And I said, Cal Ripken breaking Lou Gehrig's record. And he's like, oh, you know what's going on? I said, yes, I know what's going on. But thank you for asking. Why do you think I'm staring at the TV? <laughs> One of the more monumental moments in sports. I didn't even get to watch it. But uh, unbelievable. Oh, that's right. Because I mean, yeah. you weren't alive yet. A young yeah. man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but speaking of teams that were that were decent back then and decent now, I wanted to bring this up because I feel like it needed to be mentioned. How about those Pittsburgh Pirates? It feels like they don't lose. And they're another team, too, full of young talent really throbbing at the right time. I wanted to ask you this too, because I feel like it's, it's been a debate question that I've seen going around a little bit and, and we'll dive into this a little bit on Yankee off days just to, you know, get into the league a little more. Uh, Stacey, is this sustainable for the, for the Pittsburgh pirates? You don't think so. No, yeah, I feel the exact got, they opposite. Got off, than you. They got off to a strong start last year and then they fell they apart. Did. <laughs> they did. I'd agree with you on that sense, but here's the other thing. You got to look at their division this year. They're not, not in a strong, they're not in a strong division. And with this young talent last year either, but I think you learn a lot from years like last year. You yeah. learn a lot from getting off to the hot start in last year and then falling yeah. apart. They also, you know, I mean, Cabrian Hayes getting hurt early last year really, really hurt them. Yeah. But they're getting support from pitching this year. I mean, the standings, they look they, they look terrific. And I want to go over the, the rest of their division right now because because the rest of their teams, tell me who on the, uh, out of these teams seriously impresses you and seriously scares you to take over the Pirates spot. Now, again, I know the Pirates aren't this great team, but let me, let me read off. St. Louis. Uh, are, are, are you, do you see anything out of St. Louis? Is St. Louis impressing you that much this year? Hmm. I'm always scared of them because they're a great franchise. Yeah, like I'm not yes, seeing much last out of year was last year was shocking. Yeah, last how bad they year's were. result for how bad they were and how they dug themselves into such a hole and then never got out of it. Like you know, you kind of expect the 
Cardinals when they were as bad as they were to do what the Nationals did in 2019, not necessarily go to the World Series, but, but being bad and, and, and then put some fight at up. least put a put up a fight at some point, and they never did. That was so shocking to me. Year, they didn't add much other than Sonny Gray, so they didn't do much in the offseason. I don't I don't believe the Cardinals are going to have that much of a great year again. Yeah. Okay. Cincinnati, do you believe in that team? Because I don't. I, no. They're young. They've got talent, but they don't add. They have, yeah, like they have they some add. exciting individual players who will be exciting to watch, but as a whole, no. They don't add. No. The Cubs. The Cubs lost their best pitcher last year in Marcus Stroman. Hendricks has not been the same. I, I don't see anything in the Cubs that makes me think they're going to be a division winner. And then and then right after that, Milwaukee. That's the team that scares me that could take over Pittsburgh. Because yeah. uh, any team with Christian Yelich on it, but every time I think about Milwaukee and how good they are, Corbin Burns doesn't play there anymore. Right. One and of the best pitchers in the league is not on there. We all have anymore. to deal with him in the AL East now. <laughs> yeah. And Josh Hader's not there anymore either. So yeah. one of the best relievers and the best closers is not on the team anymore. And, and you lost a lot. So Yelich has gone off to a good start this year, but uh, they've lost a lot that last offseason because they don't want to pay their players. And then you look at a team like Pittsburgh, young, vibrant, has the prospects in their farm to make moves at the deadline. I like what Pittsburgh offers, and I think they can actually hold on to this for the first time in a while. They're off to a 9-3 and three start. They're as good as the Yankees right now. That, that, that That's how good they're playing right now. So I think Pittsburgh can uh, can hold on here. Let's just remember they were 20 and nine when April ended last year, right? You're I believe right. that was the, so we'll see how they do. Let's see how they end April. <laughs> and then we'll come back to it at the end of May and see how they're doing. <laughs> of course, we're going to get into an interesting topic. If you guys have been a uh, Yankee fans for a while in the next segment, because uh, I want to go through my, uh, my era of the Yankees and go through the two thousands and let's give you my legacy team for the 2000s. We're talking near 2000, turning the millennium to 2024. Who are the best players that we've seen on the field? And I'm talking about best Yankees, not just best overall players. I think that has a little to do with some of these players that we could actually debate on. So we'll get into that in the next segment. Um, and I, I think Stacy's going to have a little bit of disagreement with me here. There's going to be a lot of, a little bit of disagreement here. So we'll get to that on the way back. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. And let me tell you where I'd invest some of that money in. If you guys are watching this show and, and you're getting ready for the games later on tonight, Texas Rangers money line and Philadelphia Phillies money line. The two of them together, you get a plus 163 your hundred dollar bet can turn around into 163 dollars of winners i like uh, i like texas going up against oakland i don't think oakland's very good and john gray has gotten off to an unbelievable start for texas this year i think he'll shut down the athletics not that it really takes much to shut them down anyway but he'll shut them down and the rangers get off to a victory and then i like the philadelphia phillies to beat the pirates i know we just talked about how good the pirates have looked this year but Ranger Suarez, he's one of my underrated great pitchers in baseball right now, and he's gotten off to a rocky start. I think this is the start that he's going to start to show things back, and the Phillies can always score some runs. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. Guys, what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. <laughs> Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sto sports stories of the day. With the local experts of Locked On, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And remember that you can catch every pitch of Yankees' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. Stacey, I got a lot of a really fun topic to get into. I was born, full transparency, in 1997. My first baseball memories are 2003, watching the Yankees collapse. 
So a lot of fun. I started off on the painful side. I'm also a New York Rangers fan, so I've experienced a good amount of pain. I don't got to be a Mets fan, thankfully, so I don't deal with that much pain. <laughs> but enough. I, I, I've really only seen the Yankees win one World Series, and I was in the seventh grade when that happened. So I've, I've really – I have not seen the Yankees' success pattern that a lot of people have with the 90s. I don't, I don't – I didn't see that. I didn't get that era. So it's a little different, but I want to I want to test you because I know that you've watched my whole era of Yankee baseball as an adult. So you had a little bit of a different viewpoint of my Yankee era than I did because a lot of it I was a child who just you know home run yay fun and I didn't really get into it as much until I was older and I looked back on it. So I want to read off positions of every player and I've got um, three pitchers, three relievers, three uh, three starters, three relievers, and I've got uh, the best player at every position. This is my Yankees legacy team for the 2000s, 2000 to 2024. Stacy, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. My first starting pitcher, and I think the best starting pitcher the Yankees have had in the new millennium is Garrett Cole. He's still pitching for the team. He's still back. And Stacy, Hall of Famer. No question, going to be a Hall of Famer, one of the best pitchers of the generation, a former number one overall pick, a guy the Yankees were in on since before he was even on the Yankees signing this contract, signed the largest contract of all time with the Yankees. Yada, yada, I can go on forever. Garrett Cole is a future Hall of Famer, already has one Cy Young with them, and hopefully a World Series in the future. Do you agree? I can't imagine, you know. Oh, no, I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, I debated this era of the Yankees because I, I wanted to include a picture from it, but I think this guy deserves it. CeCe Sabathia. Uh, they won a World Series with him. He was an absolute horse when they signed him. Uh, never got a Cy Young, but 3,000 strikeouts. Um, a, a, a dominant lefty. Uh, he's going to get into the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah. I, I think he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, and uh, something underrated, too. Stacey pitched late into his career, and he didn't have that collapse that a lot of pitchers do. He came over as a true power pitcher and then developed a cutter, developed breaking balls, and really became a finesse kind of pitcher towards the end of his career. I think CeCe Sabathia deserves to be in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was he was unbelievable. When they traded him to Milwaukee before he got to the Yankees, and he basically carried that team on his back by pitching every, like, three days, I'm surprised his arm didn't fall off from that. I mean, it's just unbelievable what he did with his career, how long he lasted, Loved how he stuck up for his teammates all True the time, warrior. no matter who it was. He was fantastic. Yes, I definitely agree with this choice. My last one, a lot of different guys that came into mind. Masahiro Tanaka I had a hard time leaving off here. Um, a, a, Just a, an absolute gamer. I had a hard time leaving off the Yankee greats like Carl Pavano. Uh, I'm kidding. Um, but I wanted to I, I wanted to add in Mike Messina, a Hall of Famer that, that, that I think deserves to get in here. But instead, I added Roger Clemens. And people forget towards the early 2000s, Roger Clemens was on this team, and you're talking about one of the all-time great pitchers, and he pitched really great for the Yankees towards the end of his career, bounced around the league for a while, but Roger Clemens is, is debatedly the greatest pitcher in the history of baseball, and, and, and we forget because his great years weren't necessarily on the Yankees. But he still pitched really well for the Yankees for an extended period of time, so I had to give the nod to Roger Clemens. I can see that, yeah, because I – was leaning toward Tanaka, but to give that era someone, I would pick Clemens or Andy Pettit. Carl Pavano. Just because oh. of no, <laughs> I saw Carl Pavano. He how many times did he even start for the Yankees? Maybe seven times because he was injured yeah. all the time. I yep. saw him at least five times starting. Oh, you got you were the lucky one that kept going to in the 2007. Games was... It seemed like he started every Sunday, and I had Sunday season tickets and it was like it's Pavano again I saw him get hurt the one time like the first time he got hurt as a Yankee mm -hmm. he got hit by a comebacker I was at that game you seem to be good luck let's go to the relievers the Yankees have certainly had a, a plethora of great relievers over the years Cashman it's one of one of his best traits is finding bullpen relief obviously Mariano Rivera the greatest reliever of all time there's no question one of the greatest athletes of all time I added in Andrew Miller and I think mm. we forget how dominant Andrew Miller was. He became Girardi's go-to guy. Uh, playoff starts, great. That slider was unhittable for a while. Uh, so Andrew Miller, I think, deserves to be in there. And my last reliever, Zach Britton. And, and people forget, too, because of the way his Yankee ten tenure ended, mm. how, how good and how dominant Zach Britton was. He was one of the best closers in all of baseball, and they had him pitching in the eighth inning. That's how good Zach Britton was. His sinker was one of the greatest sinkers I think baseball's ever seen at 99 miles an hour. No one can replicate that sinker. He might be a Hall of Famer, actually, if you look at his stats. Zach Britton was that good in his in his tenure. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone else that comes to mind, but those are the three guys that I had. Hmm. I was thinking D-Rob. 
As he one. had a, a, a long tenure with them too. And especially when he came back in 2017, he pitched really well. I don't know if he had the dominance though. I don't think he was as feared around the league as these other guys. Yeah. I think pe people knew they couldn't hit Britain. And I think they knew they couldn't hit Miller. You, you knew you had no chance when those guys started coming in. D David Robertson had a different feel. I loved him, but I, you never felt like you couldn't hit David Robertson. Right. You just always got out of those jams. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's going to be a lot of fight with you on on the on the fielders, uh, uh, the rest of it. My first baseman was Mark Teixeira. I don't know. Maybe you're a Giambi girl. I don't sense that you are. You're, you're, you're a G See, Mark Teixeira, though, <laughs> some, here's something people forget about Mark Teixeira. No, but I, I agree with the text pick, but I know I loved I loved. Jason Giambi. The power okay. is there with both of them. Here's the difference. Teixeira is one of the greatest fielding first baseman I've ever seen. Yeah, Giambi was like a statue. I saw, I yeah. did see him turn a 363 double play in person. It did actually happen. I know it's shocking to even think about, but I did witness this in, I want to say it was 2005. But Mark Teixeira, switch hitter, much better from the left side, but silly, was a switch hitter. One yeah. of the greatest gloves you can see. And, and he put together some really, really good uh, team seasons to the Yankees. Also, won a World Series. And it's hard for me in my lifetime only seeing one right. to not give it to the guy that won one. Uh, second base, not many options, honestly. Not many options. Oh, you know, I, I, I loved the 2017 <laughs> team. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to add Starling Castro for old time sake or new time sake, whatever you want to call it. It's it's Robinson Cano because yeah. if he doesn't get caught with steroids, he's an absolute Hall of Famer. Yeah. Uh, shortstop, it's not even a debate. Um, it's obviously Troy Tulowitzki. Uh, we're moving on to third base. Um, <laughs> Alex Rodriguez. I, I can't not put him there. Yankee fans. Some Yankee fans don't like him. A Rod's one of the top five players in the history of baseball. Yeah. Say we oh, don't about yeah. steroids. They want and and people don't give enough credit for his Yankees Yankee seasons. There's there's there are seasons if you look back and do one of your two a.m. Uh, baseball reference years. Alex Rodriguez has plenty of years where he puts up legitimate video game numbers of the Yankees. Uh, yep. Look it up because it, it'll, it'll fascinate you if you forgot. Left field was really tough. Really tough. Um, it might turn into Jason Dominguez once he's back at some point. For now, for me, it's Hideki Matsui. I agree and, with and that. You might, want, you might want to put Brett Gardner there, and I can't fight you if you want to put Brett Gardner there because his career with the Yankees was very solid. But Brett Gardner's year, Yankee career ended as a stiff. He did, and, and I hate to admit that, but it's the truth. Matsui won them a World Series in Game Six. He did, with his <laughs> he did. and you can't forget that World Series MVP, really good all-time Yankee. Matsui deserves to be in that spot. Center field, uh, it's going to become Judge, but I look at Judge still as a right fielder, and I left Judge at right field. Um, I'm giving it to Bernie Williams, who played in the 2000s, played effectively up until 2006. I don't think he was worse than Johnny Damon who was a really good Yankee center fielder, but no one else comes to mind. Not not Aaron Hicks. I'm not putting him in that spot. I guess Brett Gardner played a lot of center field, but I look at him as more of a left fielder. Uh, you might differ here, but I'm on Bernie Williams. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yep. Um, I'm going judge in right field. I don't think there's been another right fielder comparable to him, and no. I'm going to count him as a right fielder. Um, And then at catcher, you're going to disagree here, and we can go into it in the next episode if you really want to and break it down. I'm going Gary Sanchez. Oh, his Yankee career and see that reaction. His <laughs> Yankee career ended really, really terribly. But don't forget what he did in 2016. He lit the league on fire in 2016. He hit 16 home runs in his final 30 games. It was one of the more impressive come ups you've seen of a rookie. If, if, if Jackson Holiday does that, people will be calling him a Hall of Famer by, by week two. Right. They will. And, and and people forget the next year that Gary Sanchez had that 2017 run, the pivotal hits that he had in that postseason was Jorge Posada good. Yeah, but Jorge Posada was really good in the in the 90s. He was a really big part of those 90s teams. Jorge Posada's 2000s tenure, I don't view as one of the great catchers. And while Gary Sanchez's career wasn't great, man, he came up and let the league on fire. And I can't forget that. Maybe I'm being biased and it's recency bias, but I think overall, we also forget the canon Gary Sanchez had. Fielding was not great. The arm was tremendous. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. We're going to yeah. have time to debate that one because I feel like you're going to really disagree with me on that one. Yeah. Well, I just think the the length uh, doesn't go in Gary's favor, but the defense does. Throwing yeah. defense, not particularly behind the plate, but Jorge wasn't that great. <laughs> an, an absolute, an absolute cannon, it really. Just I, I, I thought Gary Sanchez, I thought their career was going to be better than it actually was. That it actually wound up being, but I mean, you can't deny the little things that he did throughout. Throughout, um, the, when he came up, he was lit the league on fire. He almost dragged that 2016 team that traded players away back into the postseason. That's how good he was. Uh, one, one more time, Stacey. Don't forget to join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. 
There's a link in the description below and a 14 day free trial. You get texts from you or me and you can text all of us questions. And speaking of that, you guys better leave your questions for my first fan mail Friday that I'll be a part of. Really excited for that. If you join the Insiders Club, you're going to get top priority. And remember that you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast at Sirius XM. You just got to download that Sirius XM app, that SXM app, and search the word Yankees. Stacey, that's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Yankees. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'm Brian McKeon. And I'm Stacey Gatsoulias. We will see you tomorrow.